Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day, isn't it? Yes. Yesterday was a beautiful day, too. What? Yeah, yesterday was cloudy and overcast, and it's spitting and rain. Well, when you're burning a lot of stuff, that's a beautiful day. <laughs> I think it worked out fantastic. What's that? Well, you're in Idaho. Who knows what goes on in Idaho? They got their own climate. <laughs> uh, we're going to partake this morning of the Lord's Supper, and I'm, I'm just waiting a few minutes for the, the parents to come back. So has anybody heard a good, clean joke? <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road? One more. Why did get to the other side? Why did the elephant cross the road? Because <laughs> he was stapled to the chicken! <laughs> it's your joke, I know. <laughs> I wish the parents would hurry up. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and start. Um, let's see, Tim, I think you want Paul to come up and help stand up. on the night that Jesus was betrayed, uh, he took his bread and he broke it, and he gave thanks, and he told them, this is my body broken for you, and as we take communion today, I would ask that you would contemplate, you know, we, we typically reserve um, the abuse that Jesus suffered on our behalf, we typically reserve that for Good Friday, Easter, but you know, this is something that we remember year round, this is the whole point of what our salvation is. This is what it costs. So as, as the guys uh, pass out the bread, I would like you to contemplate his body broken on your behalf.
And then I never talked to her again. How long do you think we'd be married? The first year. Pretty much. <laughs> but the communication has to be ongoing. It has to be kept fresh. Right? So if God desires relationship with us, when Paul's talking right here, he says we pray without ceasing, there's communication going on. Always. There's always communication going on. Part of that communication, though, is we got to learn to shut up and let him talk. Okay? Um, I'm not really good at that. If, if things get quiet, my mind just goes to other things. That's a discipline that I'm working on developing, is to try and be quiet before God that I can hear him. All right? So, and so from the day we have... Uh, uh, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the with the knowledge of His will. Okay, did you catch that word "filled"? That's like filled up. Okay, not just a little bit. Filled. Okay, when when you take your car to the gas station, you want to fill it to the top. You go until the little thing clicks off or it spurts out at you. Sometimes both. Okay? You fill it to the top. So, Paul is asking that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will. Yeah. The knowledge of his will. Well, God, what do you want? Now, I've heard a lot of things about, you know, the, the sovereign will of God, the spiritual will of God, the moral law of God, the personal will of God. I'm not even going to get into that. We just want to know what his will is. Okay? We'll let him decide what that is. We just need to be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all, again, remember we talked about non-exclusive last week. We are talking about love. Okay? This is one of those, includes everything. In all, spiritual wisdom and understanding. Listen, Paul is praying that the Colossians would have it all. They would have a complete understanding. Don't get to the point in your relationship with God where you feel like you, you're, you, you're, you've reached as far as you can go. This is, this is as far as I'm going to go. This is as much as I'm going to be able to understand. This is as much as I'm going to be able to comprehend. Or, conversely, get there in pride and say, I've got it. Okay? Paul is praying that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. See, that God will let you into the mysteries. God will let you into the mysteries. Those things that are not perceivable by your own human capabilities. God will let you into those. Why? Why do we want this? So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Wow. Look, do you see this is the objective here? That we would walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. The Lord here, I believe, is specifically referring to Jesus Christ. That we would walk in a manner worthy of Him. Remember, last week we talked about love, and he said, by this the world will know you are my disciples if you have love one for another. They'll know you're mine. We want to walk in a manner worthy of him. <clears throat> not worthy of your, your siblings in Christ, not worthy of your denomination, not worthy of whatever weird religious ideas you might have received in your upbringing or your Christian walk, but in a manner worthy of Him. Fully pleasing to Him. Wow. Fully pleasing to Him. But God would say, good job, kid. Do you want that? Think about that for a minute. Do you want to be fully pleasing to God? Or are you willing to settle for just kind of pleasing? 
occasionally pleasing. Or like, I spent a lot of my Christian walk just not offending him. I wasn't worried so much about him being pleased with me as I was with him not being angry with me. If I could get to neutrality, I would be okay. <coughs> no. Fully pleasing to him. But see, it doesn't end there. Paul continues on. And he says, bearing fruit in every good work. Uh-oh. Again, this is it comes after, not unto. This is not unto salvation. This is a result of salvation. Bearing fruit in every good work. I'm working on this one. I'm working. As a matter of fact, I've been struggling this week because I'm having difficulty trying to determine the line between what I'm to do as a pastor as God's calling versus what I'm doing as a pastor because it's expected of a pastor. And I'm trying to define where that line is and what I put on myself, the burdens that I put on myself that are impeding me from doing what God wants me to do. Is the things that I'm doing because they're expected of a pastor, are they bad? No. I don't think so. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing them. Who's going to waste their time doing stuff that's bad? Well, we all do. <laughs> Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Ah, oh, see, that's cool. See, this, this right here sets the bar so that after 50 years of being a Christian, you're still learning. Now, I don't know. I, I know I'm weird. Okay, I know I'm peculiar, but I don't like to learn things. I don't like ignorance. The kids will come home from school and they'll start talking to me about what they learned. Now, it's hard enough with my sixth grader coming home and, and telling me about the things they learned in math because they changed all the terms <laughs> and they changed the way they're supposed to do it. And it doesn't matter that he and I came to the same answer. The way I did it is no longer acceptable to the teacher. <sighs> then my junior daughter comes home with physics and pre-calc. I lied. There are some areas that I'm happy to be ignorant about. <laughs> she starts talking about waves and forms and things and, and I just go... Surely there's got to be something easier for me to learn. <laughs> but see, you are never going to max out your knowledge of God. Never. He's infinite. And that, that man, that's cool. You, that should excite you. That should get you pumped about being a servant of the Most High God. Christy and I have been married for 26 years next week. Right? Right. <laughs> oh. Pop quiz, and I put it on myself. <coughs> and I'm still learning new things about Christy. And as much as I love Christy, she's not infinite. God is infinite. And if you will give him your time and attention, he will constantly reveal new things about himself to you. Look, God isn't up there hoarding. No, this is mine. You know? I, I hoard. There are certain types of cereal that I like. <laughs> Unfortunately, my kids like them too, and there's more of them, and they eat more than I do. <laughs> so, we buy two boxes. And one gets put in black Sharpie. Dads! <laughs> because the kids eat cereal at any point of the day. And I'm all excited because we came home from the grocery store and I got my cereal. <laughs> and when I go to eat my cereal and it's gone, <laughs> bad things happen. <laughs> 
I don't want to eat your cereal. I don't want to eat mom's cereal. She eats all those nutty, grainy things. <laughs> I want my cereal. Which is? I got a lot. <laughs> I got, and, and when the kids moved out, I thought I was safe. Three of the five have moved out. They still come to my house and eat cereal. <laughs> I'm walking out from the room and Benjamin's sitting there with a... <laughs> and it's like pouring out. And I'm, what cereal is that? I don't know, it's in the cupboard. <laughs> I whore, okay? God is not like that. God is not like God's better than me, thank God. <laughs> He's not hoarding. He wants you to know and grow in Him and grow in your knowledge of Him. Continuing on, verse 11. May you be strengthened with all power. Look, do you understand that all power is God's? It all comes from Him. If God chooses to not let that battery work, it won't work. If God chooses to not let the devil work, the devil can't work. Do you understand that? That's what being sovereign means. It's all His. It's His power. May you be strengthened with all power. Pray that for me. Pray that for each other. Pray that for those that are going through difficult times. May you be strengthened with all power. According to His glorious might. Again, it's His. Right? For all endurance, Okay, for all endurance, catch this next part. And patience with joy. Look, there's a lot of people out there in this world that are making it on their own without God. And they gripe and they whine and they complain and they have attitudes and they're never satisfied and they're, they're hostile. See, if we're like them, do we really belong to Him? Because see, he didn't say there weren't going to come tough times. He said he was going to give you everything you needed to survive those tough times. To get through them. For all endurance and patience with joy. <coughs> with joy. See, that's, that's, that's cool. Any fool can suffer hardship. But it takes a special kind of fool to suffer hardship with joy. It takes a fool that's willing to say, God, I don't know why you're putting me here, but I trust you in this. Because see, that doesn't make any sense to the world at all. We're special kinds of fools. Okay? I want to be a special kind of fool that when hardship comes upon me, like Peter in Acts, when they beat him, said, don't, don't, don't preach this anymore. Sorry, we've got to listen to God. We're going to do what God says. Whack, whack, whack. Thank you, God, that I was considered worthy to suffer on your behalf. That's the special kind of fool I want to be. Not for taking abuse because I'm stupid. Like Paul tells the slaves. Do it because I'm righteous. That I would have joy in that. Giving thanks to the Father. Remember earlier, uh, three or four weeks ago, I asked you, keep track of how often Paul says give thanks. With thanksgiving. We are to be of all people thankful. Because we understand, in part, what he has done for us. Increasingly, what he has done for us. We should always be thankful. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you. Do you understand what that means, right? Qualified you. 
Yes? Yes. And I will go on. To share in the inheritance of the saints in light. You, you, you get to receive this now. You, you get a full measure of the inheritance. Because you weren't mine, but now you're mine. <coughs> See, you, you weren't mine because you were a child of the darkness, but now you're mine. So you receive the full measure of inheritance that any of my children do. Man, that's cool. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness. <coughs> now, as, as you hear these testimonies over the next couple of months, I love the way that Paul put it today. He took away a burden that I wasn't even aware was there. I, I didn't even know the weight was there until it was gone. See, you don't know what darkness is until you've been exposed to light. You don't, know, you don't understand, you don't have a, a measure, a grasp of what darkness is if that's all you've ever known. I remember watching a movie years and years and years ago. Uh, there was a blind girl, and this guy was talking to her about colors. Now, I think the movie was called Mask. It was about a, a boy that was disfigured. And... Uh, he was trying to explain to her how she could perceive colors. And so he was going through different things like um, cotton for white. And how he would perceive cotton in a way that she could perceive, or I mean white, that she could perceive white. And, and then he gave her like a hot rock for red and cool water for blue. But see, she couldn't really perceive what that was because you couldn't see it. When you're in the darkness, you don't understand what the light is because you don't have it. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Reach down into the pit, grab Glenn Van Note, pulled him up. Reach down into the pit and grabbed you and pulled you out and put you here. Okay? You know, we talk often about the economy of God and how it doesn't work to our rational minds. This is one of those things that doesn't work to our rational mind. How can you apply blood to a filthy garment and have it come out spotless and pure and white? That's the economy of God. He pulls us out of that refuse heap anoints us with the blood of his son and we come out spotless, pure, and holy. He's transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption. We are redeemed. You guys know what that means? It means you were slaves and someone paid the price for your freedom. You were a slave. Meaning you were subject to whatever will your master had. And God paid the price to set you free. We are redeemed. That should astound and amaze you. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of of sins. It's no longer imputed to me, my sin. That has been covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's, it's gone. God looks at my scorecard and it's wiped clean. He looks in the records, purged. Paid for. All my debts, my fines, what I owed, paid for. See, in communion, we talked about his broken body. It was my body that deserved to be broken. It was your body that deserved to be broken in full accordance with the law. It was your blood, it was my blood that deserved to be shed to pay the price required by the law to return to holiness. But Christ took upon himself 
all of that on our behalf. <clears throat> See, we have been redeemed and we have forgiveness of sins. See, this is what we should be praying. Filled with the knowledge of His will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, walking in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. The writer of Hebrews says, by this point, you guys should all be teachers. But I'm still having to treat with you as though you were infants. We'll go back to the beginning and start over again. Strengthened with all power, according to His might, not ours, so that we will be able to endure and have patience with joy. <clears throat> and then we give thanks to God because He's the one that has taken us out of the pit, out of the darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of His Son. Giving us the right to be called children of God. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Amen? Amen.